This video demonstrates how to do a subcuticular suture to close a wound. This suture is used when the tension is minimum in a wound and the subcutaneous dead space is eliminated. The closure method is commenced with one deep suture in the subcutaneous tissue near one end of the wound. The forceps helps to see into the wound to take the first bite The knot is closed with a surgeon's knot. And this is secured with the reef knot. The short end is cut just below the skin edge. The closure is now started by bringing the needle back to the apex of the wound. The needle is inserted into the mid dermis and a C-shaped bite is taken through the dermis for about five millimeters. The needle is then inserted into the dermis on the other side of the wound, directly opposite where the last bite exited on the other side. Again, the needle is rotated through the dermis for approximately 5 mm. Directly opposite this exit point, the next suture is inserted on the other side. This continues along the entire wound. Care is taken to use the forceps in a gentle manner on the skin edges. This suture can be done by the lone surgeon, but it may help if an assistant is available to hold the long ends of the suture out of the way while each bite is taken. You can tighten the suture after every three to four bites. Once the end of the wound is reached, tension is placed on the suture away from the wound to pull the skin edges together. On this occasion, we are going to finish the suture with an Aberdeen knot. A deep bite is taken in the wound. When pulling the suture out of the wound, it is not pulled out fully. A loop is then left at the end. The thumb and the index finger are inserted into this loop with the right hand. Then, while holding the long end with the left hand firmly, the long end is grasped with the right index and thumb and pulled partially through the loop. This is tightened to form another loop. Then the process is repeated, pulling another loop of suture material in through the new loop, while all the time holding the long end with the left hand. You will find that pulling more on the lower end of the loop with the right hand will help tighten it. After tightening three loops, the long end of the suture with the needle attached is pulled through the loop entirely and it is tightened. To bury this knot further, the needle is reinserted deeply away from the apex of the wound. Where the needle exits through the skin, the suture material is cut flush with the skin. The first knot is placed at depth. The short end is cut just below the skin edge. The needle is rotated through the mid dermis only. The next stitch is placed opposite to where the last one exited the wound. Each stitch is of equal size. Each stitch is of equal depth in the dermis. The wound is pulled closed intermittently after every three to four stitches. The final Aberdeen knot is commenced with a deep bite in the subcutaneous tissue that is not near the dermal edge. It is not pulled fully through to form a loop. The thumb and the index finger that are inserted into the loop grab the long end of the suture. It is pulled through to form a new loop. Note that when tightening the loop, pulling on the lower end of the loop helps in the tightening process. The long end of the suture is pulled entirely through the loop with its attached needle. The knot is buried and the suture is cut. There are other methods of securing both ends of a subcuticular suture. Often undyed absorbable material is used. Although sturdy strips may be applied over a subcuticular suture, the inherent strength of the closure is in the stitch itself. <laughs>